Hey guys, uh, welcome to this episode of the podcast. I got a uh, new guest here, um, Brian. He's also a YouTuber, fitness geek, and I'll just let him introduce himself. So, yeah. So, what's up? My name's Brian. I'm 15. I do YouTube, Instagram. Trying to get into all that. Um, I would not really describe myself as a power lifter, but I do enjoy strength training as well as you know training for size. And I'm just here to you know talk yeah like it's a, i actually have to commend you because you're the same age as my younger brother uh yeah. and it like you have a mentality that i think is a lot uh better than most kids your age Thank you. yeah because if you look at most kids that are 15 now especially me when i was 15 i was more playing video games eating junk food and sleeping yeah, I think the reason that, like, I'm kind of like the way I am now is, like, I was like that, like, to the extreme, like, when I was, like, 12, 13, like, I was, like, really, really bad, so I kind of had to snap out of it, and, like, that's when this mentality kind of started picking up. Yeah, uh, with that, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what does fitness mean to you, and, like, what brought you the motivation to change your life at such a young age to bring fitness um definitely my my older brother kind of got me into all of it um kind of still he is also still into it we work out together sometimes but i remember he kind of like came into my room and we like wrote down a diet plan and everything and i didn't really know it was gonna get into this like to this level but um i just like saw it as a new kind of like fun thing to do and i really really got into it made instagram made youtube and this happened yeah it's around the same thing that happened to me as well like in terms of getting a plan uh but yeah like it's a uh new thing for both of us where i i was originally a power lifter but I got so big, my body couldn't handle it anymore. Like, when I tried to lay flat, my quads are so big that, like, it would hurt my ass. Oh, yeah, no. Laying on Strength the training, just, it just hurts in general. Yeah, especially when you're doing extreme powerlifting like I did. Like, I would walk like jello after a squat session. Yeah. But yeah, I lost all that after I changed my weight uh, plan. Do you still, uh, like, train? Like, Oh, I still lift heavy for my size. Like, I'm currently 195, and I'm deadlifting 405 the last time I did, did it. Uh, for, and how old are you? Uh, I'm 22. Pretty solid. Yeah, and my bench, last time I was actually training professionally, I was lifting around 345 for bench. Jeez. And I cut it down, so I do uh, eight times four of uh, 225 right now. Uh, and when I say eight sets, it's two sets uh, at uh, four reps per level. Yeah, yeah. And then for my squat, I originally was at 450 plus body weight. And I dropped it down to uh, 225. Mm-hmm. I still sort of train heavy, but like I was just like, Probably, like, six months ago, I would do, like, strict powerlifting programs, like, RP training and everything. And then I kind of – because after that, I would still do my hypertrophy. Like, I would still do high rep training. And then, like, honestly, now I still train pretty heavy. Like, I still strive for progressive overload. But definitely um, not strictly, like, four by four, three by three, all that. Yeah, for me, like, it was mostly, like – I just have to eat whatever I can just to be able to get size. Because if you look at like the biggest, like the strongest guys out there, they're all massive. Yeah, well, with me, it's kind of easy for me to put on like size, but like you need to make sure it's the right size. Clean size, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of goals do you have for the near future, especially during the quarantine for your fitness? Yeah, um, I'm honestly just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Probably, like, my end goal is to get picked up by someone. I don't really care who, BQ, Elfleet, Gymshark, whatever, like, one of those comes by. I'll be more than thrilled with it. But 
I'm just gonna kind of take the steps that I know that I need to do during the quarantine. Yeah. You said you were 15, right? So do you <laughs> plan on, you're probably, uh, next year or so, uh, you're probably going to have to choose a university or post-secondary path. Do you want to make this a career, like take kinesiology? Or is this going to be a hobby for you? Hmm. Definitely, like, throughout my life, I wanted to be, like, at least, like, a passive income, like, something on the side. I definitely would not be mad if it's a career. And I'll probably pick a school that has some, programs that are decent for it as well yeah i like small career advice i can give you is uh try choosing something like biomedical engineering like i took original engineering originally and my electives were all biology based so i was still taking i was a so i would manage to get myself a job after i graduate but while i was studying i was taking all the courses i wanted to take like nutrition physiology anatomy mm -hmm. and all yeah that. i'm taking that next year or like high school anatomy. Oh, exercise science. I still remember that in my high school course. Uh, mm -hmm. I walk in, my gym teacher's like, here's the skeletal system, memorize it. Here's the muscular yeah. system, memorize it. <laughs> yeah, fun course. Uh, but lots of memorization. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, um, ha did, did you have any plans before that the quarantine kind of screwed up for you? I mean, I obviously like going to the gym like a lot more than training at home. I had like a pretty solid group of friends. We were all going, everyone's getting bigger and stronger, but it's whatever. I mean, I'm definitely more fortunate than a lot of people who don't have access to barbells or anything. But like money is not even an issue for a lot of people. They're just out of stock. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I actually posted, I'm going to be posting another video as well with like uh, links. But if you want, there's actually this one uh, barbell set that actually comes with like inbuilt with uh, leg curls. Yeah, my friend has that. A I'm so jealous because like honestly, chest and back are like okay to hit at home. Yeah. But once I hit legs after you squat, it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah, I do like I my leg workouts, my squats were my main event, right? So I was doing mainly leg but like now i can't i have to sit there and do like a full saitama challenge to like actually actuate my legs as opposed to like yeah my uh, chest where i just do like 20 push-ups and i'm like my pecs hurt <laughs> yeah like i was um you know those the glute raises with the barbell like the hip thrust yeah like just like everything at home is just like not as good like i literally got stuck under the bar and i had to take <laughs> I had to take all the plates off. Yeah, no, it, you should see my pec slides. I do it on a mattress once in a while. No, yeah. I have, like, an uh, adjustable bench as well. So like, Yeah. Oh, yeah, mine's adjustable too, but, like, the area that I – the only place that has space for that bench is, like, super close, so I can't stretch my arms all the way back for a pec fly. So I have to go onto my mattress and do a pec fly, and whenever I have to change the incline, I just put a few more pillows under my back and – <laughs> I'm really training. I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but if you remember those old Rocky movies when he fights Ivan I've, I've, seen, I've seen like one or two of them, yeah. Yeah, there's this one training montage in Rocky Four, I believe it is. He's fighting the Russian guy. So I basically turned in turned from the Russian guy to like a uh, cheap farm boy Rocky. <laughs> that yeah, no, some dude I like we're like Instagram friends. He um has a similar setup in his garage and his like thing that he re-racks the bench bar on is so low that every time he like almost misses it. Yeah, like it, I, everyone turned into a uh, fitness Ty Lopez now uh, here in my garage with a new barbell set. Uh. Yeah, everyone's, it's kind of cool. Everyone's like going hard with their own equipment, but like as soon as gyms open back up, we'll be really excited. Yeah, but like, it's going to be a good mix because everyone's going to be scared. Like, I don't want to touch something someone else, like, who was sweaty touched because I don't want corona. Everyone's oh, yeah, gonna it's, going to be, it's going to be weird. Yeah, everyone's going to have that, like, mentality that, like, oh, mm -hmm. my God, this guy sweat on the bench. I don't want to sit on there. I don't want corona. Yeah, I'm in New York, too, so it's, like. You guys have it horrible down there, don't yeah, you? Yeah, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Toronto. All right, so it's not that great up there, either. <laughs> Yeah, like here in Toronto, like the fun part that we're having is our government, he, they just opened up parks. Oh. 
but like people were like gave zero shits they were outside jogging and everything and i'm like i mm. like they brought their kids out with like no mask they were sitting there like petting each other's dogs and like yeah. i'm sitting there like like a responsible citizen i am wearing my mask and like and they're all like uh no I know what you mean. I've gone out like three or four times in this whole time, and that's just for like food in my car. Yeah, I go out like I, well, I can only jog so much on a treadmill. I like, like I need to jog outside. So I'm like, oh my god, parks are closed. Uh, the trails still open, but like the only people that come to a park are kids that want to play on the swing sets. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be empty. But when I go there, I see like people petting each other's dogs and stuff. I'm like, dude, stay at home. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like this entire thing would just be over if people just stayed inside for like three weeks. Yeah, like I stayed home for a full month at one point, ordering groceries and stuff. Uh, like I, I don't know if you guys have Instacart cart down there, but it's almost like a uh, Uber for groceries, or like. Dude, I, I can't even. I can't even drive yet. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. It, it, Instacart's basically like a Uber Eats for groceries. So you go to your nearest yeah, grocery yeah. store and they deliver it to your house. So mm. that's a cool thing that people can try. But probably the best thing to do is like not worry too much and just like get on a bicycle, put on a mask and grab your groceries. Yeah. No, because the first like few days of like the lockdown and stuff, my mom was like talking to me about um, like food shortages and how there were going to be some. So in my mind, I was just, like, I was so paranoid my gains were going to be lost. <laughs> and now, now I kind of, like, understand. It's just, like, you can only buy, like, one or two of these. Yeah, like, it's, I kind of changed my entire diet to, like, eating a lot. Like, surprisingly, if you eat healthy properly, it can actually turn out really cost-effective. Yeah, because I, um, my... My, like, original bulk where I put on most of my, like, muscle and size was so dirty. I was probably, like, at least 4,000 calories a day. Yeah, I was eating, like, the same thing when I was powerlifting to bulk. But yeah. now, like, when it, I was eating four to 6,000 calories a day, like, killing two burritos in a go. Yeah, you got to get big. <laughs> yeah, got to get swole. But, like, when I cut, like, I'm sitting there, like, with a pack of oatmeal, and I'll put some almonds and some... Mm-hmm. Uh, raisins in there and like when I eat lunch whey protein smoothie with some like some brown rice and stuff and it's like it's surprisingly compared to what I was eating when I was bulking this is a lot cheaper and it's lot, also less food yeah less food but like I'm still eating a similar amount of calories but when food. people like an average I'm eating like 2,500 3,000 calories but when people are sitting there complaining about their regular 2,000 calorie diet, like, oh, it's too expensive. I'm like, yeah, then quit buying the bags of chips. Bags of chips are, I feel like the average person eats more than 2,000. That's why we have this, like, problem. Yeah. That's, I think that's one of the biggest issues out there. Like, most people just eat because they're bored and not because they're hungry. Yeah, like, it's so easy to eat. I'm at 2,800 right now. I'm actually in a surplus. I got a pretty small one, like 100. But, like, it's literally so easy for me to eat the 2,800. Like, I'm literally in a surplus and I want more. Yeah, but, like, the thing is, you're at your age, you can basically eat whatever you want without, like, even at my age, but, like, once you get to, like, the average age of a uh, person oh, yeah, sitting at I'm, home now. <laughs> when like, I'm, like, 30. Yeah. yeah, I like, when you're 30, 35, you'll look at a milkshake and your ass will start jiggling for a week. Yeah, no, as, as soon as, like, this ends. I don't know when it's gonna be, but I have this joke like I'm not gonna be able to walk. I'm gonna be one of those wheelchair people. <laughs> You're basically gonna be me after a uh, squat session. Yeah, but instead of workout, it's gonna be for food. Yeah, you're gonna look like one of those people in Wally. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I saw a few of your Instagram pics where like you had a lot of transformation. So what like what was one of the biggest transformations you had in a while? Honestly, like pretty recently I did a 90 day cut because I had dirty bullets for so long. And I think I went from like 205 to like 176. Like given a lot of that was water weight, but 
I feel like because I put on all that muscle, like this time I was actually like able to be shown. Yeah. It like it's similar to me as well, but like you'll definitely see the muscle when you've been bulking that much. Mm-hmm. I definitely saw it. I went from yeah. uh, 240 to 175. And how long? Four months. And by the time I finished, I, like, you could see, like, striations and everything. And I'm like... Wait, four months, 240 to 165 in four months? Yeah. That's a lot. And, yeah, no, don't worry. I gained 20 pounds in, like, next three months. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm the same way. I can gain and lose, like, very quick. <laughs> yeah, I had a uh, really big thing that I did where, like, in the summer, I basically did a data entry job in a warehouse, but they be, but they also needed some guy to like move the boxes and everything of the papers. So I'm like, I'm not gonna sit here for eight hours a day on my butt. I asked them, can I be transferred into like the paper moving thing? Yeah. So I was on my feet eight hours a day, like moving stuff. I bike to work, bike back. I did a constant exercise. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, and I was also eating like this low carb diet, so I was eating like a block of cheese, block of butter a day. Oh, but keto? Like, We're yeah, going keto? Full blo- but like, it was a, I wouldn't say it's pure keto because it was a dirty keto. Like if it was a pure keto, you'd be drinking like olive oil, you'd be having avocado toast, or like avocado. And stuff. I mean, you can still, it's still keto as long as you're not eating carbs, right? Yeah, it's a dirty keto. It's basically a cheat. It's the equivalent of liposuction in uh, dieting. Whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah, it worked. And the sad part, like the fun part is, I still maintain all my strength just because of constant exercise. And you're getting, I assume, a lot of protein as well. Uh, yeah, so I was eating, like, there was a Wendy's near my place. So I would ask for a burger without the buns. Like the In-N-Out uh, protein style. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys have the internet down there, right? No, 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 no. I'm talking about California. Oh, uh, yeah. Last time I went to California it was a wild r- ride. I went to Vegas for my 21st birthday. Yeah. Fun times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I probably get banned from YouTube if I start talking about the stuff I did. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you also do a bit of coaching and all that stuff on Instagram, right? Um, I just recently started that. It's kind of just like, it's super cheap, like 10 bucks a month. And I made a little program, but essentially what most of the coaching is, is just like any questions that anyone has, I will answer literally unlimited. I give my personal phone number and everything. And yeah, like just ask away. I can do meal plans, dieting, macros, like essentially literally whatever you need. If you need to gain, lose weight. If you want to get stronger, bigger, chest, legs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so do you have a few clients that you deal with right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I know a lot of people who, like, especially me, when I had to cut, I was eating food left and right, and it got to the point where, like, when you have to bulk to the count point I did, it was an addiction. And for most people, it is. How do you get rid of them? Like, how do you help them get rid of, like, Yo, I want to eat that burrito. I think uh, with the counting calories, like, you really control the food. Like, if you have a set number, and for me, the past, like, few months, I literally, one day, I haven't even gone over it. Because, like, just, like, you can literally almost, like, with getting your protein in with my, like, dieting style, you can almost eat, like, whatever you really desire. But once you hit that, like, 2,800 or whatever you're at, 2,000, 3,000, just stop. And I think I've pretty much mastered it and I control everything I eat and it's pretty much perfect for me. Yeah, that was, uh, I actually, a lot of people, it's hard to visualize. One thing that actually um, helped a lot of people just to visualize it is whenever you lose, like, let's say you uh, are in a 500 calorie, er, oh, 500 calorie deficit mm-hmm. and that, and considering like the calorie count, that's like five grams worth of uh, uh, or five grams worth of fat, right? That you yeah. lose. That's the same weight as a five cent coin. 
of fat. So for every 500 calories, so I actually took it on a scale. I measured out five really? fat and it turned out to be a, around a spoon of fat. Wow. I'm like, every time I get a 500 calorie deficit. I'm I've like, never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah, just putting it in that visualization really cut it for me. I'm like, yeah, I got to keep it at that level. Now, at one point, like on the dirty keto diet, I wasn't feeling hungry for three or four days. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things for a lot of people, like once they are in a deficit for so long, is like getting back into surplus to like actually put on the mass. Yeah, it's all about the nutrition as well, right? 80% mm. of the nutrition. You eat, right? You don't even have to go just walking up the stairs that will burn enough calories for you to lose weight or gain Right? yeah but yeah uh i know you do a lot of uh, like you have your own youtube channel and stuff so are there any products and services you wanted to uh advertise for us uh just the youtube channel if you could check it out maybe subscribe um i'm pretty much making two videos a week like or like one every four days um i go in depth on a bunch of stuff trying to bunch of new camera stuff and whatever but you just check that out that'd be awesome yeah so thank you guys for coming on. I'll put Brian's channel in the description. And if you guys have any questions, please do reach out to both Brian and I. And also, yep. I've mentioned this in previous podcasts. If anyone's interested in buying computers or computer parts, my friend Christian and I built a, well, my friend Christian built a computer building website and we're trying to promote it. All right, guys, take care. See you later, man.